Hello everyone! Um, in the previous video, I made this example. What this example is doing is it's using something called transfer learning. I tr it's already been trained to recognize my happy face. Oh, my sad face. My high hand. Oh, my sad face. The process that I use is something called transfer learning, where I'm using a pre-trained model, MobileNet. I am eliminating the last part of what it does, which is like take an image and give it a label with some probabilities. I eliminate that, but I'm using all the steps it does up until that last step where it basically boils the image down to a nice a little smaller array of numbers called the features. And then I assign my own labels to particular features from images that I'm giving it and train it again. So now it knows how to recognize new images and instead of giving me the mobile net labels, giving me my own labels. So that's what I did. That's called classification. In this video, what I want to do is use transfer learning not to do classification, but to do something called a regression. Now, regression really sounds like some scary, complicated mathematical concept term. It's really quite simple in this case. Classification says, for this image, I would like to have a label A or B or C. One of two options or five options or a thousand options. I am taking the image and putting it in a bucket. It is a ukulele. It is a train whistle. There's no in between. A regression is I want to make a prediction from that image, but I'm not making a prediction as to which bucket it falls in, but I'm making, I'm get, I want to get a number. It's really more like a slider. So instead of, uh, instead of, Am I happy or sad is how happy versus how sad. I want a single number. Of course, a regression can produce more than a single number, but in this case, I want a single number. I'm going to train it. I'm going to say this, this image is a zero, this image is a one, this image is a 0.5, and then after I train it, it's going to give me all numbers in between. So I'm basically training the model to, to look at images and produce the results that are like a slider. Hopefully that made somewhat sense. Don't worry if it didn't. I mean, uh, I'm gonna produce the code and I think it'll, it'll make more sense, which I do. So once again, I wanna thank um, Gene Kogan. Uh, check out the ML4A website, which I'll link to. Gene Kogan made a set of examples that do exactly this with TensorFlow.js, and this is really a, um, taking inspiration from that and doing the same thing with the ML5 library. So let me go to my code. Uh, this is the code that I left off in the previous video with the image classification uh, example. And the main thing I'm going to change here is, well, there's a lot of things I'm going to change, but I want to change this word here, right? I want a feature extractor from the mobile net model, and now I want to do a regression, not a classification. Then I also want to have a slider. So these buttons, ukulele versus whistle, or happy or sad, I don't want these anymore. I'm going to keep the training button, but I want to have a slider. So I'm going to say a slider, I'm going to say let slider, and then in setup, I'm going to say slider equals create slider. The slider should have a range between 0 and 1, should start at 0.5, I guess, and have uh, increment, incre incremental values of 0 0.01. Let's just make sure I see a slider. Right, so now I, I see a slider, and I'm able to move it around, okay? So I've got a slider and I can move it around. Now, I need to have an event that happens whenever I move the slider. So whenever, oh, yeah, whenever I move the slider, the event uh, in, for the P5 DOM library, again, there's a number of different you know, ways you can do this, and you can find a link in the video description to, I think, hopefully a plain JavaScript example that does the same thing. I think that exists. <laughs> um, uh, is input. So let me just say uh, console.log slider.value. So what this should do is now anytime I move the slider, I should see the value of the slider. So if I move the slider, yeah, you can see zero, you can see in the console all the way up to one, all the way down to zero. Perfect. Because what I want to do whenever I'm moving the slider is I want to say, and I don't want to call this classifier, I'm going to call it, um, I, the, I guess the correct term would be regressor. That sounds really weird. I'm going to call it predictor, predictor. Um, so I'm going to say predictor equals mobilenet.regression. And when I move the slider, I'm going to say predictor add image with that slider value. So basically I'm saying, give me 
an image, uh, no, sorry, not give me, assign this image, this image's features to this number. So basically I'm saying, I'm gonna move the slider, I'm gonna move it over here, move it over here, and I'm gonna say, uh, oh, wait, so, sorry. Oh, it's always doing it, that's weird. I probably should, hmm, I probably should create an add image button. Let me create an add, I was kind of doing it whenever I moved the slider, but I think interaction wise, it's gonna make more sense if I do, I'm gonna make a button called uh, add example, add button, and I'm gonna say um, add button equals create button, add example, image, and then add button dot mouse pressed, uh, and then I'm gonna say predictor dot add, I'm gonna add it only when I press the button. So forget about this slider dot input thing, I'm gonna add a, the slider value only when I press the button. So in other words, oops, uh, error on line 47, uh, this has to say function, uh, and then here, right? I'm putting these anonymous functions inside here, they're the callbacks for mouse pressed. Okay, now let's try this again. So basically what I'm saying is, if I move this to one, I'm gonna say like add example image, add example image, then I'm gonna move my hand all the way over to here and move this over, I'm gonna say add example image, add example image, add example image, et cetera. So, and then I might like uh, put it in the middle and add like add example, uh, all right? So I'm adding a bunch of images. So I, you know, I'm trying to do something that makes sense to me, which is like map the position of something, but you know, you don't have to be so literal. You can probably come up with your own creative way of using this, but let's see if we can actually get it to work. So I'm gonna hit train. I don't know, I probably need to change some code there. Classifier is not defined, yeah. So sketch, let's try to get the rest of the code in here. Uh, so this has to be predictor train. So this should be the same thing. And then once it's finished, call uh, predictor, and it's probably now not classify, it's probably predict, got results. And then the result, it's not a label anymore. I'm gonna, it, uh, I'm gonna call it a value and I'm gonna say the value is zero, and then I'm going to uh, say uh, value equals result, and predictor predict. So I basically, everything is the same as before. I'm just changing the name of some things because I'm no longer classifying and getting a label. I'm predicting and getting a number. I, I might have missed something. Let's try running this and see what happens. Okay, label is not defined, sketch.js line says, so this is now value. Okay, so we can see that the sample value, the starting value of zero is here. So I'm gonna put this here. I'm gonna add a bunch of examples. I'm gonna move this over, move the slider over, add a bunch of examples. I'm gonna move this over, move this over, add a bunch of examples. I'm gonna move this over, move this over, add a bunch of examples, up, down. Let's move it back over here. Let's add some more examples. Then let's call train. It's training, it's training, it's training, it's training, it's finished, and now, one down to zero, up to one, uh, pretty good, pretty, pretty, pretty good. Not perfect, but pretty good. Boy, wouldn't it be nice if I drew something on the screen? What the example, the example, the original example that Gene Kogan made and the ML5 example doesn't draw the text, but it actually draws a, I mean, it's nice to sort of see the text, but it draws a rectangle, um, the rectangle at, I'm gonna say, value times width, um, height divided by two, uh, 50 comma 50, I'm gonna say rect mode center, and I'm gonna say fill 255 comma zero comma 200. So now we have this nice rectangle here. Do bear with me one more time to do this. I gotta retrain it. Uh, I'm gonna say, hey, Add example image, add example image, and move it to the middle. I'm gonna add some example images. That's not really the middle, I'm gonna move it over here. I'm not, I, I could be more careful about this. I should move it up and down, ah, up and up, 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 down, 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 down. Move it back to the middle. Let's add some more examples in the middle. I got example image, add example image. Let's move over here. Ah, let's add some more example images. All right, let's train. Train, 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 train. Okay, training is complete. And now, oh, I, where was I standing? That's actually kind of important. So look, it's kind of, it looks like I almost have like a computer vision project, <laughs> right, that's following this. But you have to remember, that's not what's happening. I could have done this with my, interestingly enough, it's also working just with my face. Like it sort of got the sense of like something in front of the background probably, you know, even if I hold this up, 
you know, it, it's sort of working. But remember now, I don't have to be so literal. I mean, this could map to sound. Um, I could use different Im like images of cats for one thing. I don't even know. But the idea here is now, instead of the image producing a label, the image produces a number. And that's a regression. And remember, this wasn't not happening from scratch. This is happening because I'm basically saying this whole process that's already been learned, just take out that last part where it turns it into the fixed set of 1,000 mobile net layer um, labels and um, and turn that into um, turn that into something else, my own labels or my own numbers. All right, you know, there's something else that I want to mention that's really important because it, it came up in the chat. Now, where is all this happening? You might ask yourself, am, am I like broadcasting images of myself somewhere out into the cloud for all this? What's kind of interesting and amazing about this is everything is happening here locally inside the browser of this computer itself. It's all gone. It lives nowhere else. The ML5 library, right, the ML5 library and the P5 library are being accessed from the cloud. They are being downloaded when the page runs. I could have local copies of them. The mobile net model, the thing that I'm starting with, the mobile net model is also being downloaded from the cloud. ML5 library is taking care of that for you. But once all of that is done, it's all happening here in the browser. And this, by the way, in theory, <laughs> would work on your phone as well. It's called mobile net. That model is a small, not accurate, not super advanced, robust, but it's a small little model that can meant to work on a mobile device. So it's important to realize that everything is happening here um, locally on the device. Okay? Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you. I'm in, and again, the same issue here. I'd probably want to save the train, save my retrained model. That's not possible right now. Um, easily with the ML5 library, but that will come in the future and hopefully I'll do a video on that. Okay, goodbye, and uh, I hope you make something with this and enjoyed it.